guys, I'm Adrienne and welcome to my channel The Minimal Approach. So today I have a video that's a bit different because I won't be sharing any makes. I will just be sharing the knowledge I got from my most recent sewing class that was about my serger specifically. So we learned about some things that we can do to get the best performance of our serger and some things that we shouldn't do or that we could do but I might need some tweaking of our settings to make it work. And if you don't have this specific model, the H-Class 250S, don't worry because this is the Uxvarna model, but actually it was a pattern, a pattern that was um, from white and when it closed, many um, sewing machine companies bought it um, and Uxvarna did, so they're creating this model just with a new kind of like look but the inside is the same and it might even help you to choose a, a Nover locker or a um, serger if you're looking for one because it makes the treading so much easier so yeah so we'll go through a few like reasons why i bought this machine and then i will talk about tread needles and i will show you different uh, kind of like stitch that we did so if you do not own a serger yet and you'd like to know what you can do, what you can't not do, well, this is a good video for you. So let's jump right in. So first things first, what makes this serger special is that it opens up completely. So this little door usually stays closed, so you cannot really reach this uh, looper and it makes it very difficult to tread. As in this case, if you have this little tool, you can easily go put the tread in there and then put the tread in this little hole as well. So this is something that makes this model very special and very useful if you're a beginner and you kind of like struggle with treading your machine. I know I used a regular serger that didn't have this kind of like opening in the front and I thought you know, I could have gotten used to tread this serger, but it was kind of like a dreading task and I didn't really enjoy it. And I feel like I don't have enough time to sew to just kind of like have those obstacles. So, and I don't really have the money <laughs> to buy an automatic treading uh, serger. They exist, they tread with air. So this was a very good compromise. And this machine costs $600 approximately with the sewing class to show how to tread it and everything so that was very useful and i'm very glad that i purchased this uh, overlocker or serger and first things first when you want to tread it you need not to follow the manual and you need to tread the upper looper first so that's something that was a bit confusing because in my book they tread the lower upper right and left but to make everything better and make sure that your machine is tread correctly you need to tread the upper before the lower looper so that's a big difference and then treading it is very easy so we won't spend too much time on this just wanted to show you the machine and how it looks and one important thing is to put some pressured air in the machine to make sure you remove all the dust i should do it now and every eight hours you should put a little uh, drop of oil in this main kind of like cylinder that goes up and down for the upper looper. Now that we look at the machine, I might uh, read my notes a bit because I want to make sure I go through everything that I noted that I wanted to share with you guys. So first things first, four treads. So as you can see here, four treads, it's really to assemble two pieces together. So you can see that the yellow tread is making this stitch line that will keep the two pieces together and then the both the green the blue are making just finishing the edge with the red tread so that's that's what a four treads uh, stitch looks like with a serger and you really want this blue tread to go on the edge of both pieces of fabric and it's the one that will be showing up on the back side as well so it, this thread should really be visible only on the edge of the fabrics so that's a question that i had and that nikki answered to me that uh, nikki from uh, sewing at midnight 
uh, answer to me that yeah she said the same thing that four threads was to assemble fabrics together two pieces together and three threads was just to do the finishing so they confirmed this in my <laughs> sewing class uh, then the threads so most sergers are kind of like calibered with uh, threads that are size 60 and in Montreal anyway we can find them also known as Tex 27 so that's really um, serger over locker thread and the yeah so the machine is kind of like adjust to work like that so you need to find what size of thread your machine is um, adjusts for because when you look and you probably have this table as well if you bought a serger so in the table that shows you like uh, all the settings that you should use the settings will be working especially well for the size of thread that the machine was adjusted with so you can use threads that are not the right size but you might have to to like work with the um, settings to see what's working best for this size so that's a question that I really was asking myself because I had some people who were telling me, well, it doesn't matter what size of tread you use. But in my book, it was written size 60. So I was like, well, if they specify a size, maybe I should use it anyway. So, and the difference with a regular sewing machine is that regular sewing machines use size 50 and it's much more quality. So if you buy kind of like Gutterman, uh, thread it costs a lot more than um, threads for sergers because when you think about it to do kind of like the same seam you would be using four threads with a serger and only one with a sewing machine so that one thread has to be one or two if you count the bobbin but those threads have to be much stronger than when there's four thread for Trends. So we should oil the machine where I show you every eight hours that you use it. So I'm definitely past that. I should oil it. And they suggest that if you do kind of like a regular use of the machine, you bring it to maintenance every two years just to make sure they calibrate everything and make sure your little like knives inside are good and just they kind of like go through the whole machine and they clean it very well especially where the tension are just make sure everything is good also there's two little knives in this sewing machine there's one that you can kind of like sharpen after time because it's made out of carbon but there's another one that's inside that you cannot um kind of like sharpen and you only have to change it when it's um, kind of like become uh, dull okay so another thing that we learned but i i kind of already knew it because of my um regular sewing machine um she said that people have a tendency to always play with their tensions when the first thing everybody should do is just look at how the machine is thread when something goes wrong because 90% of the time it's because one thread is not going through every little like hook that it's supposed to go or one thread was before another and the thing with serger is that let's say uh, one of the loopers they I don't know your your thread kind of like uh, fails or anything you have to start from the beginning because you really need to respect that order of the threads um, of course if it's only the needle then you just thread the needle because it's the last thing you thread but if it's the loopers you need to go through the everything again because otherwise you won't respect the sequence of the threads so yeah she said if something goes wrong don't touch it your tension so first things first check your threading and if the threading is good then check your needle because it is something I know I'm not looking probably as much as I should but needles are made to last 12 hours so maybe there's a problem and it can be just a little bend a little something that you cannot really see but it's making a difference and that's what's making your um seem a little pokey or you're missing uh, some loops or anything any problems so that's one thing she suggested our teacher that we use the elx 705 uh, schmitz a needle and she said that it's like a very good needle that can do both knits and woven and there's two sides so there's a number 12 for if you're using kind of like thin fabric or medium weight and then medium weight to thick there's the size 14 so let's say you'd be making jeans you'd be using a 14 oh 
and I learned another thing that was very interesting is that let's say you're using three threads you really need to look at your uh, booklet to see three threads which one of my needles I'm using because if you want a wider three thread uh, seam you'll be using the left needle and if you want a narrower um, stitch you'll be using the right one and depending which one you're using you need to change your stitch finger i didn't know that so it wasn't really working all the time the stitch finger is the little thing that's with this part that you can remove or add and it's the thing that the loops go through to make the kind of like the width so if you have just the right needle you want to have a narrower uh, stitch finger because you want the loops to be smaller so it just makes so much sense when you know about it but when you don't it's tough and i'll show you an example of both stitches right now so as you can see on my left that would be the wider uh, three thread stitch so you have only the yellow the green and the blue as you can see the blue is really sitting on the edge of the fabric and this one is with the largest stitch finger and the needle on the left then if we look at this one this one is made with the red thread that was in the right needle and this one is a bit narrower and it has the smaller stitch finger so the difference is pretty obvious and I didn't know about this difference before I went to class so I used to always do the wide um, kind of like a tree, tree thread a stitch because I didn't know better but if you're doing kind of like a shirt and it's thinner fabric you don't want to have this bulky um, serge or seam you want to have this narrower um, seam that's really kind of like almost invisible right if you choose um, thread that match then if you want if you're using a very very thin fabric you might want to do a rolled M and if you're doing a rolled M well guess what you won't be using any stitch finger because the loops will be really tight over the fabric so this right here is an example of a rolled M so you can see it's pretty tight and the difference with this one is that on both sides the only thread color you should see is the green so it's a bit different so that's it for the rolled M and you want to do this only in light fabric or let's say if you're doing a tablecloth maybe you want to finish it like this or even a shirt it can be very cute there's also the pico stitch and this pico stitch is similar to the rolled M but this one has um, narrower stitches so if you're using let's say something that's kind of like silky and super thin you'll be wanting to use this to get it kind of like the fluidity uh, of the fabric and not make it stiff because if you do this rolled M of course the edge becomes a little stiff because there's lots of thread then there's the super stretch you'll need to put back your um, stitch finger and for this one we do play with the differential feed because we don't want to get it all wavy except you're looking for kind of like this lettuce um, style but otherwise you will be working with this differential feed and the differential feed is really controlling your little um, kind of like the little teeth under your sewing machine that makes the fabric move so there's um, there's two of them if you want to get to avoid a lettuce kind of like effect you'll be uh, making the one that's further in the machine go fast so it always kind of like pull the fabric before um, the second one pulls it so this one was not very successful because I don't know if you can see but it's those loops are a bit loose and it's not the best effect ever but with this you could be working with fabric that's so stretched and your loops will never ever um, break and just to finish up when you're treading your machine you always need to make sure that your foot is lift because you want the thread to go into the tension and if your foot is closed it's because your tensions are closed so you won't be able to pull you might be able but 
I mean, you want to put all the chances on your side to put the thread the whole way inside the tensions. Finally, I ask the question at the end of the class, how do we finish those seams? Well, you usually finish them because they all go one over the other. So let's say you have like this long uh, seam right here. You'll have another seam for the sleeve so they'll kind of intersect each other and then you won't have to finish it. But let's say the end right here, um, there's no like intersection with any other um, seam. So you might have to either pull one thread and finish it by hand or if you want, you can also use fray check or some kind of like little glue to just make it like stay together. It's up to you. But with this machine, there's no way to finish it. There's also lots of little foots that you can buy like separately if you want to do um, elastic. If you're doing elastic all the time, you can buy a foot for, especially for elastic. If you want to put little pearls on some um, makes that you do, you can buy a foot that does that. And finally, I really suggest getting an overlocker of serger if you can afford it because it makes everything so much better. Um, I've been sewing things that feel more professional and that I'm more comfortable work wearing and that look more finished and I'm very pleased with it and I highly suggest that you take a class also to get like all the functions and just make sure you're not forgetting anything and getting the best out of your machine. I think it's quite an investment and you don't want to be kind of like missing out on some parts that you could really enjoy. So I will see you next in my October makes video. I did some pretty amazing stuff and I also won the So You Think You Can Sew challenge. Um, so I'll be participating in November in the second part of it and I'm pretty excited. I was so um, grateful that I, uh, people thought my make was great. Um, I did another Kiri tank top and this one it was a floaty one with a shelf bra. I'll insert a picture and I'm so grateful for uh, Dawn and Myra. They they were so kind and Caitlin is so talented from uh, Because I'm Crafty. Uh, it was just so much fun. So if you have time, you can join us uh, the first Tuesday of November and we'll be opening our secret packages, me and Patrice, and then we'll be making something and then the finally will be two weeks later. For those who are interested, my Instagram is at Montreal uh, underscore yoga girl. I'll put it in the description below. And then you can see a sneak peek of my makes before the actual um, makes video comes up. Again, thank you so much for uh, joining me on this serger video. I hope it was helpful to you. If you have any other questions, just feel free to comment below. And I would like to hear, do you have a serger? Okay, happy sewing, bye bye.